Hey guys, so I just passed the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester Certification and I'm just going to give you a review of my experience with it. So first we'll look at the rules of engagement. So the rules of engagement is really important because it will provide you a lot of the information um, that you're going to need for the exam. And if I scroll through it, um, they'll tell you here that you can expect to connect to the DMZ network and then from there you'll need to pivot to the internal network and they give you this diagram. Now this diagram, uh, I really like it because it will show you the DMZ here and then the internal network to the right. Now I can tell you from having taken the exam that this image right here isn't what the exam environment is going to look like. Okay. All I can say it's going to be bigger. So if you look at this and you think this is going to be easy, um, you just want to remind yourself that this is an example and you really want to have prepared for it. And what I mean by that is that you went through and you watched their course material for the penetration testing student, which is 148 hours. If you go through this and take good notes, you will pass the exam 100%. In fact, when you're doing that, um, when, when you're doing this course here, let me just click on it. They will provide you the videos, they'll give you questions, and for example, when you do their labs, let me click on this lab, and you click solutions, they will give you a write-up of every single lab and the answers and you take this information you simply screenshot it and you put it in your notes and that's what I did or you, if if they don't provide you a lab environment because you don't get a lab environment for each video you just take screenshots of the video and you kind of just give a little brief explanation of what you learned right and if you do that and you're taking the test, you come across some type of um, question, right, related to your exam environment, because the questions, this isn't the penetration test, this isn't the um, the CompTIA Pen Plus, okay, the P CompTIA Pen Plus, or any CompTIA certification, will ask you questions about um, the course material that you learn, right, it could be a definition, it could be a scenario base, but it's all based of, off of what you learn from a book. Okay. This is what you learn from a practical course and your exam environment at the time. Right? So the questions I got are going to be completely different from the questions you get. Why? Because your lab environment is going to be different. Why? Because the information that they're asking is going to be different and it's going to be different for each student okay so just take just remind yourself that when you're taking this exam you want to make sure that you have gone through the material and you have good notes that you can rely upon when you're stuck and you will be stuck because the first day i gain access to the first box okay and i hadn't pivoted and because I haven't pivoted, pivoted on the second day, I was stressed out. Stressed out because I was like, I need to pivot. I can't, I can't pass this exam if I don't pivot. Okay. Because as you're going through the questions, you know, um, and you're, you're answering the questions uh, as you're going through the exam, right? So if you get stuck halfway through the exam, and you know you need about a 70% to pass, and you, just looking at your, you know, 34, 32 questions, I don't remember, the eLearn security post, how many questions you should expect, right? So if you're, if you're looking at that many questions and, and you haven't answered half of them, you're going to fail because you're going to score less than 50%. And so that's, when you have like this awakening and you're trying to enumerate and you got to take a step back and ask yourself, am I using the knowledge I learned from the exam, uh, from, from the 
course material. So the course material being this, because if you are, you'll pass, right? Another thing you can use, if you go on to GitHub, there's EJPT cheat sheets. Now these EJPT cheat sheets, they don't provide you the answers, like I mentioned. Can't, can't cheat on this one, okay? And you shouldn't, because you'll be cheating yourself. But if you look at these cheat sheets here, and what is a cheat sheet? A cheat sheet just provides you some commands that you can use if you find yourself stuck. Okay. There's cheat sheets for every exam, OSCP, you name it. And the great thing about these is that if you are stuck, I highly recommend you check check out cheat sheet. And as you're going through this cheat sheet, um, just take in mind of what tools you can use. And maybe you haven't tried something here, right? That you can try. But it all comes down to enumeration, right? So if you're able to enumerate, you're able to find a vulnerability, you're able to exploit the vulnerability, then you'll do fine. And as you're going through the boxes, make sure you're collecting information about everything because that information can be useful later on, right? And so if we go here to recommend tools, they've got a bunch of recommended tools you can actually um, utilize to prepare yourself um, or that you can actually use on the exam. And this is great. If you use those tools, you'll pass 100%. If you took the course, you'll pass because they taught you how to use those tools. If you find yourself using other tools than that, because I'm looking at the list here and I can tell you some are missing. And that's just going to be for you to figure out, you know. And if you took the course, like I mentioned, you'll be fine. Because the ones that are missing are in the course. All right. So let me go scroll up here. All right. So let's look at my um, exam results. So... For host and network auditing, I got 66%. Okay, that was the lowest I've gotten in any particular like domain. Um, and it looks like they, based off of their assessment here, for transfer files to and from the target, it looks to me like when you're taking the exam, they will actually analyze the exam environment. Okay, so... What that means is what you're doing in the exam environment is also being graded. Okay. Now, I find this a little difficult. And I'm not going to give you too much information about the exam because that would, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, everything I've given you so far is what you can find in the rules of engagement. It's what you can expect from really any exam you take. Um, and you know, me highlighting the need to take their course, okay, in order to pass. So let's just go through this exam results and just focus on the percentage here, okay. So assessment methodology, so that's 90%. Host and network pen testing, 77%. Web application pen testing, 85%, okay. And it looks like I was able to complete a lot of it and at the end, I scored 80%, which is passing. Now, I'm glad that I scored 80%. I could tell you right now, I felt like when I taken the exam that I should have scored like 90%. And so that just goes to show that, you know, when you're taking it, you've got to be 100% sure of your answer. And if you don't have the information to back up your answer, you need to go back and reassess that question before you submit your exam. Because you have 48 hours to take your exam and you have to submit it. So it's not simply the clock, you know, times out and they close your exam environment and they automatically submit it for you. Because they don't do that. In fact, you will fail if you if you do it that way because you're supposed to have submitted it before the 48 hours, right? And you click the submit button and that submits it. Okay. 
So what I'm trying to say here is like, you know, you want to be 100% sure of your answers when you're taking the exam. Now, am I giving you anything secret about the exam? No, <laughs> I'm saying just make sure you're 100% sure of your answers. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so let me go ahead and move on here. So do you need to prepare and do try hack me in order to uh, learn the skills so you can pass the ex exam? No, you don't. You really don't. They'll teach you everything you need to learn. Uh, but just trying to give you like a brief explanation about me and some of my experience before taking this exam is uh, before taking this exam, I'm, I just passed the CISP. What does that mean? That means I have like five years experience in cyber. Okay. So this exam isn't my first one. Yeah. Another thing is, is that before taking this exam, I had done numerous uh, hack, try hack me uh, courses here. So I did the red teaming. I do the junior penetration test or student. I did the offensive pen testing and I'm almost complete with that one. I did complete the web fundamentals and the CompTIA pen plus, but it looks like they, whenever they add extra material to it, you'll see um, it won't say that you completed it because, well, they've added extra material. But I got the certificate for that one. So, um, you know, I've got these under my belt. And I I felt like that kind of reinforced my knowledge, but it is completely different from their course material. Right? Like, for example, red teaming. Red teaming and penetration testing it's kind of two separate things there. They're not the same, right? Um, one red team is emulating like an APT, and where penetration testing is really just throwing everything at it and trying to um, uh, find vulnerabilities. Right? And they're just different ways of of doing the same thing, right? And so the ECPT. Um, or EJPT is preparing you for a penetration test, not to conduct the red teaming penetration test. Right, so you don't have to go through try hack me and do anything extra. Although you can, uh, you know, I don't recommend that you do. In fact, I just recommend you just do the course. It's 148 hours. That's a lot of material. You've got a lot to do. So. That's what I recommend, and that's just my quick assessment of the exam. Um, if you watch my first video, I'd, I'd give a review about their course and what I thought about it. And, you know, going back to, you know, having passed the certification, do I recommend you go and get it? Absolutely. This certification was well worth it. Um my only thing is when it comes to purchasing your voucher, you can go two routes. One, you could spend the $200, pay eLearn Security, or in this case, you'd be paying INE because they're the ones that actually sell the certificate for the EJPT. The other ones, you'd go through eLearn Security, but for the EJPT, you can go through INE. All right, so you, you pay INE. The $200 costs to take the certification. Or you can sign up for a um, INE annual subscription that costs like three hundred dollars, and you'll have access to their fundamental material as well as you'll be able to, um, you know, get a uh, exam voucher for the EJPT. So I recommend that you sign up for their annual subscription, pay the $300, get access to the fundamental um, courses that they have, and get the voucher, okay? And if you fail it, you'll have uh, an attempt to take it a second time for free, okay? So I think it's well worth it because you'll be able to um, get the voucher with the course material, and then if you really liked it and you passed the EJPT, I can see you, like myself, going for the ECPPT, which is the next step up. Okay. 
And when you do that, you can actually upgrade your subscription and they'll kind of give you a discount because you already have a subscription with them. You're already paying them money. So they'll take that in, into consideration when you're actually upgrading your subscription. So um, for me, that's that's the best route to go. Okay. So um, that's that's my uh, that's my video on the EJPT. I know some one guy he had a YouTube video about the EJPT, and as I was taking the exam, I kind of wanted to watch his video really quick because I was I was struggling. And I was watching his video. Um, I won't. T I won't say his name, but I'll say the material in his video wasn't enough. Like if you just watched his video, you would fail, because there's stuff in this exam that you will only know if you had taken the course, right? Because the course will teach you what you need to learn and pretty much only what you need to learn to pass this exam, right? Um. If, if you stray away from what they taught you, then you're going too far. Okay. I think that's what can possibly make people fail a lot more is just trying things that that they didn't learn during the course and they find themselves wasting time going down a rabbit hole and therefore failing one of these domains because all I have to do is fail one of these domains and I wouldn't have passed this exam, right? So, for example, like this one right here, like had I gotten any lower, I possibly would have failed even though I scored 90% in this assessment methodologies, right? So that's one thing to take into consideration is like when you're doing this to just be aware of that, you know, um, as far as like starting this exam, once you start the exam, you have 48 hours to complete it. Okay. And I think it's a great overall exam to really get you thinking about what the OSCP is going to feel like. Because this was stressful. I'm telling you, I was stressed out. That second day when I hadn't pivoted, I was really stressed out. And I could tell you eventually I pivoted and eventually I was able to complete all the the uh, the questions and so i can only imagine if i took the osep i want to make sure i'm prepared and that i've done everything possible to prepare myself for that moment because it's going to be stressful and it's better i stress myself out in training than to stress myself out during the exam you know because there'll be too much for me you know having taking this exam and let's say in the future i take the oscp and I wasn't prepared, uh, I'm going to feel anxiety, I'm going to feel stress, I'm going to feel, uh, um, be upset because now I'm losing, you know, a few thousand dollars um, if I fail the exam. Like, all of this is going through your mind, right? And it shouldn't. What should go through your mind is, let me go through my rules of engagement. These are the tools. I'm using these tools. These are my notes. I'm using these notes. I'm finding targets, I'm finding vulnerabilities, I'm exploiting those targets, and I'm gaining access, and I'm collecting information. That should be what's going through your mind, not, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> I didn't prepare for this, right? So, it just shows you um, what information that, that you're going to need. So, anyhow, I'm glad I passed it. On to the next one. The next one for me is going to be the ECPPT. And then after that, I'll have to just assess what I want to do next after that. Eventually, ultimately, the OSTP. Now, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe. And have a good day. Bye-bye.